All right, and on to our post processors using Vagrant on HashiCorp Packer. Uh, side note, I did leave feedback on the previous uh, tutorial to HashiCorp to tell them that some of their instructions are jacked up. So we'll see what they do. So anyways, last time we did uh, multiple images in parallel. While provisioners are run against an instance while it is running, post processors run only after Packer saves the instance as an image. Post processors are extremely varied in their function. They can compress your artifact, upload your artifact into a cloud, or create a file that describes the artifact and build. In this tutorial, you will add Vagrant post processor to create a Vagrant box from your AMI. Prerequisites, all the things that we already did. All right, so add the following post processor block inside the build block after the provisioner step. These post processor blocks will tag each image with the appropriate tags. Post processor vagrant empty string. Your build block should look like the following. Build provisioner inline provisioner post process. All right, cool. Let's take a look. Build provisioner inline provisioner post processor. All right, cool. Build and create the Vagrant box. So we're going to do a Packer build. Let's try it. Packer build right here. I was just killing. Packer build right here. Let's see what it does. Uh, let's see here. La dee da dee da. Dun yeah, this is just a regular old build. All right, well, let's pause it and see what happens at the end. And we're done. Okay, so let's take a look. Successful builds are Ubuntu Focal. Here's the AMI. Uh, and it says AWS Provider Focal Box, AMI, and then Ubuntu Box. So what that did was it created these two box files which are for our Vagrant. So, and then we also have our AMIs here that we created. So that's interesting. It did say that, and then let me tell you why it's interesting. All right, so it made Vagrant boxes, right? Uh, we've It says we only had these three things, but we have a var file too. This is because Ubuntu Bionic post-processing step overrid the image created by Ubuntu Xenial. You can verify this by going through Packer build logs. Now, uh, it doesn't say anything about going through Packer build logs, but I did find this post on this guy's blog. It says um, you have to export this so that your Packer log is set to true and the log path is set to whatever file um, so that you actually go through and read those logs. I believe we should be able to see them here. So we can see here Xenial Security, Xenial Security. Uh, Xenial, Xenial, Xenial. Lots of Xenial, nothing bionic. Yeah, I don't see anything. So, anyways, that's a thing. But if you want to look at Packer build logs, you just need to export them. Here's the ba here's the Bash version. Here's the PowerShell version. If you want this to persist, put it in your Bash RC or your uh, PowerShell profile, your dollar profile, um, wherever that path is. You should have a PowerShell PS1 file that you can update this. And then it'll always be there. It'll always be there for you. So you can add as many post processing. Uh, post processors as you want using the post processor syntax, but each one will start from the original artifact output by the builder, not the artifact created by the previously declared process post processor. Use the post processors, note the pluralization block, to create post processing pipelines where the output of one post processor becomes the input to another post processor. For example, the following configurations will create a Vagrant box and then compress it. You do not need to add this to your configuration. So in this case, the post processor is make a box, and then the second one is take that box and compress it. You can add as many post processor blocks as you want or mix and match the one-off 
post processors with the post processors block to create multiple pathways for post processing. Man, they really want you to get tongue tied with that. Manage the image. Packer only builds images. It does not attempt to manage them in any way. After they're built, it's up to you to launch and destroy them as you see fit. That sucks. After running the above example, your AWS account now has an AMI associated with it. The AMIs are stored in S3 by Amazon, so you may be charged. You can remove them by deregistering. That really sucks. They should have like a Packer destroy. Anyways, um, we did this. It says next steps. Uh, tutorial concludes. Getting started. Tutorial for Packer. You should now be comfortable with basic Packer usage. You should understand templates, defining builds, provisioners, post processors, and more. You're ready to begin playing with and using Packer in real scenarios. Oh my god, we're going to destroy everything. The most important reference in your Packer journey is the documentation. The documentation contains reference material for Packer's features and blah, blah, blah. Go read the forums and it's open source. Contribute if you want to. So there you go. The next step in the collection is to go through Docker and then there's HCP. I don't even know if it's worth going through because it's the exact same thing but with containers and then this one's the exact same thing except it's pushing it to the packer registry and the HashiCorp club so whatever um fundamentals for configuration language eh, i might be able to go through that says eight minutes long we can check that out production packer yeah we can try that too anyways so as far as AWS goes, that's it. We went through installing it, building an image, provisioning stuff, using variables, using parallel builds, using the same template, and then post-processing Vagrant to make Vagrant boxes. And there is an example that we didn't go over it of using the uh, input from one post-processor or output, sorry, as to the input for another post-processor, which can be put in pretty much whatever order and mix and match however you want. So that's pretty much the basics of Packer. Um, you can use those images however you see fit and hopefully figure out a way to put that into like a launch template of some kind for AWS like auto scaling groups or something. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. But if not, this concludes your introduction to Packer. Congratulations, you're an expert.